Welcome back everybody, this is Brother Mune here. Today we are showing the second part of a, a four-part series of videos uh, talking about various builds that I find that I reuse most, if not all, of any of these four routinely. In this case, we're talking about another strength-based build, so this would be something that would be great for someone that has a strength-based character. In this case, I decided to go with a fighter, specifically a two-handed fighter, just because I've never tried one before, and wanted to see what the class had to offer. Now, I'm not going to go into the ins and outs of what a two-handed fighter has to offer. Just know that we're going to be really good with a two-handed weapon. We'll receive a bonus to our swing as a result of that, as we level up, as we get from this down here, and bonus to the damage as well. We've got a minor amount, plus one all the way to plus four. is not stellar, but a plus four to your swing, you will definitely appreciate it. Uh, like all fighters, they get a BAB increase, a base attack bonus increase uh, at every level. So at level 20, you'll see that you end up with a BAB of 20. Solid, solid attacker, allowing you to attack upwards of four times or more with spells. Uh, notice you get a um, full attack bonus, then a minus five to the next one, minus five to the one after that, and a minus five to the one after that. After it gets to the point where the penalty would take you to a negative level, it stops benefiting. Matter of fact, it takes it to a, a plus zero, I should say. So if you had like a BAB of 5, you don't get another attack with a BAB of plus 0. It doesn't work that way. A BAB of 6, on the other hand, will allow you to have a BAB for a second follow-up attack with a BAB of plus 1. That's generally how that works. Notice that, of course, this is not including things like a haste spell, which would give us an extra attack on top of the, the first base attack bonus, the, the full base attack bonus. So you get two attacks at the plus 27 that you're seeing here. Or you could have uh, other spells that would mimic something like haste, where it gives you an extra attack. I think I'm going to say... Um, Divine Power is another one of those that gives you like an extra attack around. Uh, it won't stack with haste or speed weapon, but again, that's not the point. Point is, is there's ways to get more than just four attacks with a two-handed weapon. Uh, this character uh, can use any two-handed weapon, but we decided to specialize in a specific one. And again, this is on you, so this is again more towards flavor than anything else. That bonus uh, for using us because of things like weapon focus, greater weapon focus, weapon specialization, greater weapon specialization, improved critical for said weapon so it has a better crit range, and you get the idea. I figured you are a fighter. There's nothing wrong with being skilled in many weapons, but you'd probably have a favorite. And again, I, I play, played a theme a lot. Uh, that's not to say that he would only play with a long spear. Again, any melee weapon held, he can sword and board it like any good fighter should. So again, there's plenty of uh, ways to turtle up, if you will, to, to protect your character. That's not why you're here. You're not here for that build uh, or that talk. You're here for the build itself. What is the build in question? Well, we're talking about the uh, what I call the cleaving finish build, which is actually to say the improved cleaving finish build. You want four feet, uh, five, as you'll see, is necessary. Uh, first off, you'll need a power attack. Again, I'm playing a human, so of course at the, the first level we get not only two feats, we actually get a third feat for being a fighter. Uh, these are combat-oriented feats, but again, that's what we're talking about anyway, so again, free for everything. So notice how we managed to get not only power attack at level one, awesome, bonus to your damage, a penalty to your swing. Notice you'll get a uh, cleave ability. This requires you to actually have a strength of 13 plus, as well as power attack. Well, good news is, is the strength of 13 plus is what you need for power attack as well. So basically, by saying you need power attack. So power attack, then cleave, then you can get either great cleave or cleaving finish. Either of those are viable options at level one. I prefer great cleave because cleaving finish implies two things. One, that you're killing something, and two, that someone else is within range for you to swing at. Okay, and obviously that's going to be important for cleave or great cleave as well. But the difference here is uh, I literally set it up myself where I'm specifically saying I want to cleave. So I don't have to kill them, and that's important, I don't have to kill them to get the great cleave to fire off. What you have to do is hit them. So what does that mean? So literally if I had two bad guys in front of me and all I had was a level one character where I had power attack, cleave, and great cleave. Again, right at the beginning of this game, this is something you'd have access to. And you take whatever weapon you're skilled in. It doesn't have to even be a skill in a weapon, just something that you can equip and swing. So a melee weapon. If there's two guys within range of that melee weapon, I can literally click this button that says cleave, click that target, and I get one swing. And now you may say, well, so what? Why, why is that better than just attacking? Here's why. Because one, at level one, you'd only get one attack anyway. So why not capitalize on it and get two attacks out of it? for the price of one. How do you do that? Because of cleave. Cleave allows you to literally to take a chance at swinging at a target. If you hit it, you will swing at an adjacent target, completely different bad guy, in range. One and done. 
Okay, so now that's what Cleave does. So again, hit that dude, hit his buddy right next to him. So basically two attacks for the price of one. And you may say, that sounds cool, and it definitely is. However, you notice that again, I have four attacks. So if I go the cleave route, where I click the button at the level I am now and attack somebody, yes, I'll get to attack one guy, and yes, I'll get to attack another close bad guy that's within range of my weapon. Hence, a reach weapon is the, the appeal here. Hence, notice the six-foot reach. Having said that, that's two attacks then for clicking that button. But then my turn's over. Normally, I'd be able to swing four times. Yes, the first one would be at full attack, and then it would be penalties from there on, but chances are I'll hit once, twice, maybe even three times. Why would I want to limit myself to a hit one, and then a hit two, and then done? And what happens if I miss on that first hit? Yeah, exactly. You miss on that first hit, you got nothing. You're done. It's over. Well, that's for cleave. Notice for great cleave how it differs. As a standard action game, we'll make a single attack at the full base attack bonus. Basically, this is a reiteration of cleave. Keep reading, though. You deal damage normally, blah, 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 blah. Bonuses, etc. and so forth. Now, you hit that foe. Anything else within reach, uh, you hit another guy. You can continue to make... This is where Great Cleave differs. If you hit, you can continue to make attacks against new foes. It doesn't say that part, but I'm adding that because it's important. Adjacent to the previous foe, so long as they are within your reach. Notice reach is important here. You cannot attack an individual foe more than once. That's why I say new foe during this attack action. When you use this feat, you take a penalty to your armor five, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? You're fully fucking armored up. I don't care about that. But the point's still the same. I'm swinging, I mean, let's say I'm surrounded by four spiders, and they're all within reach of me. At level one, thanks to power attack, giving me access to cleave, and then, of course, as me being a fighter, me getting great cleave. I can swing at every fucking monster within reach of my weapon, whatever that weapon happens to be. And all I have to do is click the cleave button, click my target, and then it'll just swing until I miss. So I could hit, hit, miss. I could hit, 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 hit. I could hit 17 times if I'm within range of 17 different bad guys. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not likely. Chances are I'd say you're probably going to cap out around 3 or 4. But again, think about the potential of what we just said here. For a level 1 character with a decent swing, the nice little bonus to damage right off the bat. He's already strong. He already has a base attack bonus. It's not amazing, but a plus 1 is better than a plus 0. And again, a really good chance of landing that fucking hit. You hit a guy... Then you free swing on another guy. And if all you do is hit two dudes, it's worth it. If you hit three, even better. Four, now you're talking. And again, that's a level one character. Having said that, that's not the build. That's not everything. Now, those are important. Those are useful. Notice we have cleaving finish. Now, this one is different than great cleave and cleave in a specific way. This requires you to kill a target. This is not a clickable. You do not click cleave and hit somebody. I mean, you could. But you don't have to. You basically just attack, 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 attack. I got four goddamn attacks on one guy. Cleaving finishes autopilot. What happens is the moment you kill somebody, doesn't matter if it's your first attack, second, third, fourth, fifth, billionth attack in that combat round, however many you get, you kill something. If something else is a bad guy within reach of your weapon, you swing at that guy. Notice that's nice, but it's again another one of those where it's one and done. Notice you can make only one extra attack per round with this feat. Cleaving finishes, again, limited, very similar to cleave, where you poke a guy, and then you poke another guy, and you're done. Cleaving finish, you kill one guy, and then you poke another guy. Whether you kill him or not, doesn't matter. The first guy has to die, the second guy you're going to swing at, at your full base attack bonus. So again, free attack. And you may say, well, that sounds good too, and it definitely is, but there's better. What's the better? It's the fourth and final, well, fifth, I suppose, if you count power attack as one of your feats, because you need it. And that fifth and powerful one is this one here, improved cleaving finish. I should have pointed out for uh, Great Cleave, this one here at level 1, as well as Cleaving Finish, they have requirements. Great Cleave, not surprisingly, requires you to have a strength of 13 or better, which again, we had that with Power Attack, so again, no problem there. And we needed Cleave, not surprising again. So, again, kind of makes sense. Cleaving Finish, the same deal. You would need Cleave, and you would need to have a strength of 13+. Plus. And again, you had that because to get Cleave, you had to have Power Attack, which also had to have a strength of 13 or plus. So again, you've met all the requirements for these guys. So that's why I'm really not bringing those up because it's built into the build, so to speak. But it is important. Notice then for improved cleaving finish, the last one of these, you have a very long list of things that you need. For example, you need cleave, check. Strength of 13 plus, again, check. Power attack, again, check. Uh, great cleave and cleaving finish, those two that we just talked about. You need all those. So we need three feats plus power attack, so four feats to get this anyway. And we're not done yet. 
The reason it didn't get grabbed here at level 3 or 4 or 5 is you needed the battle 6 to grab this one because this one is broken power. What does improve cleaving finish do? Use cleaving finish any number of times per round. What does that mean, Brother Mutant? Well, let me explain to it. Remember how we said with cleave, you click a button, you attack a guy, you hit him, you'll swing at another guy next to him and hit him, you're done. It caps out at one and done. You hit one guy, you know, swing, hit, hit another guy. Swing, hit, or miss, whatever happens, happens, and now you're finished. You don't get to attack again. Great Cleave breaks that in that you can swing for a new opponent every time you hit another opponent. So if I circle up five guys and I hit uh, with a Cleave ability, and I swing to the next guy, hit him, swing to the next guy, hit him, and keep swinging until I run out of either new opponents within reach, or I miss, I whiff. So I can, I can hit once, I can hit twice, I can hit 20 times with there, there's enough guys within range. So again, Great Cleave is broken. But again, you have to specifically say, I'm not going to attack four times, I'm going to attack once with Cleave, and roll the dice and hope for the best. If you whiff on that first and only swing with Cleave, you've just wasted your turn. But if you hit, you swing and hit the next guy, potentially, and then the next guy, potentially. And you can see how it can snowball into way more than four attacks. So again, how does that explain what improve, Improved Cleaving Finish does? Well, Improved Cleaving Finish does the same for uh, Cleaving Finish what Great Cleave did for Cleave. So, Improved Cleaving Finish, if I attack somebody, kill somebody, because of Cleaving Finish, Autopilot, I will swing to another t uh, bad guy and try to swing at him once and only. If I kill that dude, I'd normally be done. If I hit him, I'd be done. If I missed, I'd be done. Thanks to cleaving finish, doing one and done, and that's it. It specifically says that with the very last sentence, you can make only one extra attack per round with his feet. This takes that limit away. Any number of times per round, you can use cleaving finish, which means I stab a guy, kill it, I swing at the next buddy next to him, I stab at that guy, having to kill him too. Well, I just keep going. And it's more than just that. And this is the part that people don't really quite grasp. And I don't know that I can show you this in combat at this early level, but I will endeavor to do so. If you had, let's say, five bad guys around you, and I specifically uh, tried to do cleave, not, not swing at them this way, where I poke, 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 poke. No, I mean literally just go cleave, swing, hit. Okay? Remember, that means great cleave is going to continue to swing at new guys. Not because I killed them, just because I hit them. Remember, cleave, all it cares about is did you hit. Yes. Is there another bad guy within range? Yes. Swing at that guy, hit that guy. Great Cleave continues that process. So I swing and I hit. I switch to a new target. I swing and I hit. I switch to a new target. I swing and I hit. Basically, I keep swinging and hitting until I miss. Or again, I run out of bad guys. Having said that, what happens if in one of those attacks, I kill somebody? Remember, Cleaving Finish right here and Improved Cleaving Finish are autopilot. They just work. So again, it starts the process kind of over again. What does that mean? It means I literally will swing and hit another guy, swing and hit another guy until I can stop running out of guys I'm killing. Now, having said that, that doesn't sound that impressive because a minute ago we were just swinging and hitting guys anyway thanks to cleave and great cleave. Sure. What if I don't use cleave? What happens then? What if I attack four times in a combat round? Let's say I'm fighting four spiders. First hit, I kill a guy. Very first swing. Because of cleaving finish and improved cleaving finish, I will swing at all four of those spiders once. Once that got killed, and then the next one, the next one, and the next one. Until I basically stop. I whiff. The beautiful part of this is I still have my second and my third and my fourth attack still. Just because I whiffed, 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 or hit, hit, hit doesn't matter. I still have my subsequent attacks still to roll. That means I could swing, kill, attack, 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 attack. Done. Swing for round two, or sorry, round two, I shouldn't say it that way, for my second attack in the same round. Hit. Okay. Did it kill? Sure did. Guess what? Improved cleaving finish. Attack, 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 attack in the fucking circle. You can see that this gets out of hand very quickly for the number of attacks you will get. That's why the cleaving finish, or improved cleaving finish, if you will, build is so powerful. It only takes five feats, one of which is something you're probably going to grab anyway. You're a strength based character, power attack makes sense. And cleave is a decent attack to your uh, feet to pick at level one. Hell, the fact that we can even get great cleave or or cleaving finish your choice at level one 
is, again, extremely powerful. Just those three feats. Again, power attack, cleave, and either great cleave or cleaving finish is good enough. But if you're already there, why not grab the following two feats? Again, whichever of these two you didn't take, you know, great cleave or cleaving finish, and then when it finally unlocks itself, the improved cleaving finish. Because again, those are on autopilot. It just works. It's fucking amazing. So let's show you an example of this. So I'm at an area where I'm going to have a, like three spiders that fucking jump me and my team. I'm going to use a tank, or this character, as well as my character, to engage in some shit. We're going to have to hope that the one sniper bitch that's not part of the party, but that's part of the party, Anivia, doesn't kill one of these spiders off. Because I want all three to be up and in our face. So here we go. Moving in for attack. Here's Sila. Now notice I'm going to have her come up and in it. She's not going to attack. I don't want her to kill anything. I just want her to be a tank. You know, to, to take the beating, so to speak. I'm just going to even move these guys away because fuck that shit. I don't want to worry about them being stupid. Now, spiders are going to rush her. And remember, I have given myself, just so we're clear on this, I've gifted myself a long spear. Your choice, the three... The reach weapons I can think of off the top of my head are Bardish, Glaive, and Longspear. And those were all available to me, I believe, at level 1, because I'm fairly certain all those are not exotic weapons. I think they're martial weapons, which fighters all have training in. If not, I apologize. It's only one more feat to grab the weapon you want. You get exotic weapon proficiency. Sadly, in this game, unlike in, like, say, Neverwinter Nights 2, where if you get exotic weapon proficiency, you get proficiency in all those weapons. In this game, you pick an exotic weapon. So when it says exotic weapon proficiency, it will open up a list of weapons, and you will say, oh, I want that one. And that's the one you're now training, because apparently exotic weapons are harder to learn, so you can only learn one at a time. That doesn't mean you can't pick that feat again and get another exotic weapon. Hey, that's fine, but that's silly. Point is, though, is you can get any weapon you would want to get as a fighter, which is fucking awesome. Now, what are we going to do now? Uh, first, I want to show you something. Notice I have my spear, my long, cold iron long spear. It's not magical in any way. I got a solid attack bonus. I got some armor on. I gifted myself some generic full plate armor. Uh, notice that um, I have a better crit range than normal thanks to improved critical for the weapon. That's not part of the build. It's just something I grab because fuck it, why not? Same with uh, weapon focus and greater weapon focus. I didn't need either of those. So I'm happy to take them though which, again, I appreciate. So, again, a solid upgrade. Now, notice, again, two-handed weapon training. That's something for the type of fighter that I am, and I'm using a two-handed weapon. doesn't matter which kind. It is a two-handed weapon, and therefore I'll get a plus one, plus two, plus three, and eventually a plus four, which is where we're at now, to the swing as well as to the damage. I'm swinging for solid damage, and I'm not buffed in any way, just to be real clear here. 41 fucking damage is a lot of goddamn damage. I'm doing real well for myself. So I'm pretty happy with this. And again, this is a non-magical weapon. Just cold iron. Not even a, a masterwork or a masterpiece or anything like that weapon. So again, the fact that I'm doing well for my swing and well for my damage and have a nice multiplier in the crit and a, a better crit range, I'm doing well for myself. Now, what do I need to show you? I need to show you how far you can reach with said weapon. So to do that, I need to step away. Yes, they attack me. I don't care. I have more health than they can possibly deal Notice how close I need to be. I'm going to rotate the camera to give you some, some uh, field of vision kind of look here. Look how close I am to this bastard here. See where the green stops? That's how close I have to be to stab him with my spear. That's why it's a reach weapon. Okay? And as cool as that is, I can make it better. I'll show you that in a bit. But this is a solid reach now. Which means, again, if, if she's if, if I were behind her, her, way behind her, like where Nibia is, when this fight started... They would not have gotten an attack of opportunity off against me. I could have literally walked to right up to here. You know, this green dot stops about here. And stabbed that thing in the face. And I'm so far away from it, it would probably have to move to me to attack me. That doesn't mean it, it can't. And that doesn't mean it won't get a full attack. Because, again, within five feet, I can do a five-foot stutter step and attack multiple times. That's not impressive. So the bad guys would be able to do the same thing. But they're, again, a trick. So while this range is looking impressive for the reach weapon... There's a way to make it better. Notice I had to walk even farther to get this one in the back, but there's a reason to want to. Okay, remember, if I walk to here and stab that thing and kill it, which is fairly likely with the amount of damage I do, I'll get to do an attack of opportunity, well, not attack of opportunity, a, a cleaving finish, an improved cleaving finish attack against all other bad guys within range. Well, guess who's going to be in range? 
this fucker and that fucker. If I just attack this one, or just that one, I might be able to hit one or the other, you know, kill this one and then kill that one, but I will not be in range of this dude. See how far away I have to move to get him? So in this particular instance, I would recommend you move farther in. Again, it's, it's counterintuitive. You're like, why am I moving closer in? Because I want to get everyone within the range. The downside is, is the game does not show you the, the, like a circle on yourself for the range of your weapon, which would be ideal. And they had this in Kingmaker, sort of. There was a mod, the one that gave us the turn-based mod in Kingmaker before they unlocked turn-based mode for that game and, of course, now this one. There was a mod, and that mod was awesome because it showed you a little circle around your feet when you selected your character for how far your weapon would reach. So your weapon, the equip attack, would reach out in a, in a little yellow circle to let you know, oh, he's not within range. I have to move this much closer. But again, with a reach weapon, that circle got bigger, and it was obvious. And if I get bigger in size, notice uh, that's why I'm going to trick you guys with some stuff. So we have spells like Enlarged Person, Righteous Might, Legendary Proportions, and I have two versions of the same thing, of Frightful Aspect. But all of these are size bonus increases where I still get to keep my weapon. I'm still a human, humanoid-looking bastard. Bigger, stronger, better damage, all that jazz. But better than that, my reach of my weapon will be much better. Again. Let's just attack and see what happens. Remember, I'm only going to attack once. Why? Because I moved a lot. I didn't do a five-foot stutter step. I've moved considerably. That means, best case scenario, I'm only going to swing once. A standard action. But remember, if I kill something, it's awesome. Here we go. Don't hold back! Two dudes died. Wait for it. Ooh, pudding. Let's go back and look at that. Okay, so here's my first hit. Okay. Solid swing, terrible roll. But a solid swing, very nice buff here. And this guard actually comes from my um, background. This is new. I don't remember this being a thing. In fact, I saw this the other day, and I assumed when it said enhancement, I thought it meant that I had a magic weapon. No, you get a plus one for being a guard. You get a plus one for being an Eldori dueling sword person based on your background. That's new, and it doesn't say that in the tooltip that I saw. So this is a nice upgrade to your swing, which, hey, I'll fucking take it. But notice we had flanking. That's nothing that I care about. But she was nearby, and therefore I got a plus two to my swing. Basically, it's another way to set up sneak attack damage. Again, power attack was a minus six, but a solid amount of extra damage on top of that. Normally, I would say it'd be a plus 12 damage. But for the two-handed weapon, it becomes triple the damage instead of double. So instead of plus 12, it's plus 18. But wait, there's even more. Because I'm a two-weapon uh, fighter fighting type, I get even more damage with power attack. I get like 100% more. So instead of 50% more, instead of it being minus 6 plus 12 would be typical, I say it'd be minus 6 plus 18, which again would be typical with a two-handed weapon. Now, since I'm a two-weapon fighter, I get minus 6 plus 24. A lot of extra damage, just saying. Having said that, notice that I attacked one guy, only one swing, you notice we don't say anything up here, it's about swing one of two, one of three, one of four, anything like that, it's just one and done. I hit him, I killed him, and I used cleaving finish, notice that. And again, full for the next attack, let's click on it, notice a different roll, and again, full base attack bonus, all the same shit that we saw before a moment ago, and again, different target, different armor potentially, and again, hit, and hit that guy hard, and killed it. Notice I got another cleaving finish off, so again, another attack, and another hit and screwed his ass over, but it wasn't enough to kill all of them. So one of them survived. How one of them survived, I know maybe there's a fourth in here that just didn't see him. But the point is, yeah, maybe they did because you shot the bastard. Um, but the point is, the more spiders that were around me, I could have just continued to hit and hit and hit and hit and hit, and as long as I kept killing them. If I had used the cleave ability, let's do it again. Show you how that would have worked. And this particular instance, I'll just tank it myself. We I don't move. need to have anyone interfering with my ship. We are the light. They are the darkness. Do, 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 do. Come get it. I am moist and delicious. We'll have to probably waste a turn. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm just going to go over here and kind of get them all to clump up on me. Do anything. Uh, again, I can't control Anivia. This is how this gets all fucked up every time. Because she's a good shot. She'll start killing shit. Okay, he's within range of biting me, which means he's definitely in range of my, my melee weapon. So that one. God damn it, Anivia. You had to fucking kill it, didn't you, bitch? Alright, well, whatever. Doesn't matter. It matters. It doesn't matter that much. 
I am going to click the cleave ability. Notice it's an icon on the cursor that mimics the look of this down here. Click it, and again, anything within range. And at least they give you the circle now, so you can see who's within range of your cleave. See how big that fucking circle is? Cleave it, boom, double tap. One attack, got both guys. Why? Because I swing, hit one, and critted the motherfucker. No, wasn't crit him for some serious damage. But again, in the fort ignore the fortitude save there. That has to do with my improved critical abilities. Um, but because of that crit, because of that hit, I should say, uh, I use cleaving finish, or actually, no, uh, two reasons I actually hit the next guy. One was because I killed the first dude, so cleaving finish chimed in. Even if I hadn't killed him, I would have swung at his buddy. Let's see if I can demonstrate this with a different tactic. Let's use, um, uh, what do you got there? Uh, zoo. This will be quick. Okay. Hopefully these guys are within range of each other and I should be able to do it. Because these guys don't die very easily. This will be how Nevi doesn't fuck me over. Uh, they don't move, sadly. That's the real downside of these dudes. Okay. Come on. Give him a turn. Alright, here's the two unit fighter. Notice again, if I pick the cleave, you see who's within my zone. This guy's actually, it looks like he's within range. It looks like I'd have to sidestep, but this guy definitely is as well. So if I move to here and kill this guy, I might be able to hit him, this guy that's right underneath my toes, and then this dude over here might still be within range. Let's see. And remember, it's, it's three attacks. And you may say, why is that better than you just walking here and attacking four times? It's not technically better. But you're not going to be swinging four times at level 1 through 15. It's not until like level 16 that you actually get that fourth extra attack. And remember, each attack is at full bab, then minus 5, minus another 5, minus a final 5. So it's plus 20, plus 15, plus 10, plus 5 is what you would see. And of course all the modifiers, you know, weapon focus, penalties, power attack, etc. and so forth. So, yes, it's four attacks, but are they at the same strength? No, because again, one's at plus 20, one's at plus 15, and then it goes down and down and down. So one or more might whiff. Whereas if I do cleave, let's say I had four guys within reach of me, and I did that cleave move on all of them, that would be four attacks, but all four attacks would be at the plus 20. The full base attack bonus. That's the goal here. That's the biggie about hitting these motherfuckers. And again, lumped on you within range of your very nice reach weapon. So again, four is good. Sure. Cleave that could hit four guys is just as good to me. Let's find out. Okay, so I was able to hit this guy and then follow up with that guy. So what do we get? I got a hit. Solid swing. Good damage. And then because of the cleave, or greater cleave, but still cleave, I was able to hit the next guy, which is this dude here. And that's why he took 43 damage, and I hit him. If there was another guy within reach, obviously he's not. But if he was, I would have kept swinging until I missed and run out of guys. So again, two and done, it's kind of wasteful. Three or four would have been better, but these guys don't move. Let's go another round, and I can show you how he was definitely out of range. How I know that? Because if I click him to attack him, you'll see a green path underneath my feet showing that I have to move to get this guy within range of my attack. Come on. Got you on. Okay, here we go. Remember, I can hit him right where I'm standing. I can clearly hit him right where I'm standing. What about this guy to the far left? Ready? See how I have to move the tiniest pip? That little green dot under my feet tells me he's without, out of range. That's why this is bad, because again, I can't show you killing three dudes at the same time. Again, it would have worked with the spiders. I can go back here in a minute and show you with the spiders. But let's show you another thing. What if I were to make, maybe under the effect of, say, enlarged person? Wait for my turn now. See if I can reach three guys. Turn. Do, 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 do. It doesn't matter if she's attacking these guys because she can't kill them. I can't kill them. At least not easily. I'd have to use spells that are almost like insta-kill spells. 
So again, it's another way to kind of cheat this because these guys are so damn tough. Um, but here we come up on my turn again. And again, do I have to move? No green pit. What about this one? See how I'd have to move for him? Don't have to move for him. Don't have to move for him. I can hit all three of these guys within range. Now, if I do a four uh, times four attack, which is what you're seeing the little times four, there's four because I get to attack and then attack minus five, attack minus ten, attack minus fifteen, right? If one of those were to kill him, cleaving finish would kick in. These guys don't die. Again, it would be almost impossible for me to wear these guys down in a way. Their health is so, so fucking ridiculous that, I mean, I've wailed on them for, like, five rounds in a row, and I don't think I've seen their health budge. But, what about Cleave? Ready? I should hit him, him, and him, assuming I don't whiff on one of those swings. Boom, boom, boom. Three attacks. That's why Enlarged Person is of value. Better reach. And, again, you can see... Show me my weapon in a second. I go there. There we go. Show it to me again, damn it. Ooh, Devastating Blow is a good way for you to see this thing. Okay, good. So if you hover over Devastating Blow, it shows you the range of your weapon. Nice. Good information. Same with these other ones. And then these come from being the two-handed fighter that I am. Ignore that shit. I mean, they're good and there's something of value there, but I'm not going to demonstrate that because it's not part of the build. I want to just show you the improved cleaving finish and how awesome it is. Now, again, notice that I attacked, attacked, and attacked, all from clicking cleave. But the difference being, while well, I've got three attacks there, all again are at the full base attack bonus of plus 20. There's a plus 20 that one, plus 20 on this doofus, last one here. Now they're a different roll, but still plus 20. That's why cleave, great cleave, cleaving finish, and improved cleaving finish are so valuable. And again, if you were the tank, if you're up front ish, not necessarily the tank, and again, she could be the tank, and I could be over her shoulder with a nice reach weapon. As long as I get multiple guys within my reach, three or more, I'd say, and you're going to really, really devastate some of these guys because of your ability to poke, 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 poke. And if, God forbid, someone dies in all that poking, well, guess what? You get to start all over, poke, 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 poke again because you just killed someone, and that's when improved cleaving finish kicks in. This is how you can literally get multiple attacks off and around that dwarf the four attacks that a fighter will get naturally because of cleaving finish, sorry, uh, great cleave, and improve cleaving finish. Those two things alone, again, you need all the other stuff below it, but those two feats alone will make you just melt armies. And you have no idea how powerful that really is. This was the one, that, again, I used to joke about, and I mentioned in the previous video, so I'm mentioning it again here. In D&D, &D, I can't remember what, it, what edition, cleave and all this fun shit was a, a factor of. But this was one where my friend Guido used to love to take the trick of grabbing a, a bag of rats and throwing it at the bad guy. And then he would do his cleaving ability where he would kill the rat. And then it would be a massive slaughter of just everything in a fucking circle. They're bad guys, things that he hates. They're considered quote-unquote enemies, which include the other rats. So what, they died. And then the bad guy that he threw the rats on, they got fucking hit. And so did all his friends because he used a solid long-range reach weapon. And just was like lopping heads off in a fucking circle, including rat heads. And it pissed off the DM. Same general principle here. Very, very powerful. Very, very useful. And again, something that I can't stress enough can be done by a variety of builds. Again, you saw nothing in here that was, you must be a fighter. You must be a X. The only important thing was, do you have the feats to burn? Do you have a high enough strength? Do you have a high enough bab? And everyone can get to a bab of six. There is n no way I can think of if you're a level 20 character that you have a bab of less than six. Even a straight wizard will get a bab of 10. Same with the uh, sorcerer. So again, while cleave is probably not their thing, they could. There's nothing stopping you from being a fucking spear, long spear wielding son of a bitch and staying back at distance when you run out of spells and just improve cleaving and finish in a goddamn circle. You're probably not going to be very good at it. You're probably not going to hit very hard. But, hey man, three, four, five attacks versus one or two lame attacks, again, you can kind of see the appeal. This is, again, the one that I would put on a martial character of any kind. Again, Barbarians would rock this. Uh, Blood Rager, Paladins would be a good choice. Obviously, the Fighter is a good choice. The Elder Sign or Magus in general are good choices. Hell, I could see an Inquisitor having fun here. Anyone with a base attack bonus that gets up to 15 by the end of the build. So not the lowest. Doesn't have to be the highest, which is like, you know, like the Fighters, the Barbarians, or the Blood Ragers. Again... You will do well. It's just easier for a fighter to do it. This is why fighters can, again, out DPS wizards early levels in this game for a long time. Suddenly, 
there's that fucking tipping point where the wizards, so long as they have their spells, are just mowing shit down to the point where the fighter is like obsolete. It's not that the fighter's garbage, it's just a wizard, man. You know, fucking spells up the yin yang and they can fucking zip shit out like left and right. Now, let's show you something else. Uh, I want to show you the, the different spells again, just as a reminder. Remember, you have large person as a choice, righteous might. Again, and you may wonder how the hell is he casting spells as a fighter. I made sure to dump a lot of points in the use magic device so I can literally cast these spells, so I can show the cases to you. Legendary proportion is a nice uh, buff. Frightful aspect is a nice buff. Let's do legendary proportions because if it behaves like it did in Kingmaker, you're actually in an even bigger category as he became a fucking giant. Which means the reach of our weapon become redunculous. Plus he looks fucking cool, let's just say it. Ninja turn. Don't kill a spider, I need you. I'm looking right at you. Ruin everything. Alright, so again, here's my two hand fighter. Uh, notice. Uh, let's see, does cleave require any? Just a standard action. So notice this, too. If I have to move, let's say uh, I have to move to. Let's backpedal to here. See where the green becomes the yellow? Kind of hard to make out. Let me zoom in a little bit. See where the pip goes from a circle, then it moves out to another circle? That's where it's the second part of movement. What does that mean? It means I'm using my movement, and then I'm using my standard action. See the little feet there? as my second movement. That means you can't attack at that point. But see where it stops it, where it's just the circle? I can move to here and still attack with a spell, the bow, my melee weapon. If you know someone's in range, like I can move all the way to say like this dude, if he was a bad guy, and stab them in the face. But note something else. The cleave ability, the clickable, if you read the tooltip right up above where it says casting time standard action. See how that doesn't require a full action? That's, or a full round would be what it might say. Again, that means I can move my full movement, which is apparently 20 feet. You see the 19, 20, 18, blah, blah, blah down here. That's what how far you can move in a round. So I can move because of my armor 20 feet and still be able to attack. Why is that important? Well, I want to show you the range of my reach weapon. So let me step away. They may attack opportunity on me. Look, this guy's still within range. How do I know? Because do you see a green pip under my feet? No. Let's move just the tiniest bit more. But now he's still within range. See that shit? Let's do a tiny bit more. He's not within range now. See that? Because there's the green trail underneath my feet. That's how far I'll be able to reach all three of these fuckers. Why? Because he's the farthest away. Ready? I want to do... My phone is just screaming at me. I want to do cleave. This guy knows how it's going to make me move. And I'll be able to cleave that guy, which should give me attack on that one and that one and that one. Right, so it'll be this guy first, and then it'll, uh, if I hit, of course, it'll be swing at that guy. If I hit, I'll swing at that guy, and if I hit, I'm done, because I'm out of bad guys. But that's because of cleave and great cleave. If I killed them, any of them, then again, improved cleaving finish kicks in, and I start swinging all over again. And that's why I get multiple attacks in the combat round. Ready? Boom. One swing, three dudes, all dead. See that? And again, that's why legendary proportions is amazing. Uh, someone fucked this up, uh, pardon my French, fucked this up in uh, Kingmaker. Legendary proportions work beautifully, just like you're seeing here. What happened is someone uh, did a mod. I want to say Call of the Wild did the mod, or maybe it was the Elder Arcana. One of the two fucked up legendary proportions and made it where you're not double, double size. So you see I'm a big fucking giant. That's what legendary proportions is all about. You know, enlarged person is good, and legendary proportions is enlarged person on crack. Obviously, you're taller, you're stronger, you've got armor, and you got a much, much bigger reach. Not to mention, your weapon damage becomes, like, triple level. So, enlarged person takes it up one size category. Lead blades would have taken it up one size category. In, uh, legendary proportions would take it up two uh, damage categories. So, if you had done legendary proportions and lead blades, you would have, like, a much, much better damage. Instead of a 3d6, it'd probably be, like, a 4d6. Is that amazing? No. But is it good? Fuck yeah, I don't know. I'll take extra fucking damage. I mean, shit. Who wouldn't take extra damage? But Legendary Proportions is brutal because of that. So again, it's really, really nice. Now, let's just quickly show you the attack. Okay, those of you use Cleave. So it's one swing and done. 
I hit the guy, full base attack bonus of 20, and all the buffs and penalties besides. Notice I have a size penalty because I'm tired to hit those teeny tiny spiders with my big ass fucking body. But I did. Crushed it. Hit the motherfucker. And killed him. How do I know? Because you see cleaving finish here. Which gives me an attack and attack and attack. And again, kill the guy. And go in and finish again. Attack another guy. Yeah. Notice, one of these did not kill. Why? Because you see another couple attacks swing out. Actually, I got fucking, how many attacks was this? Six? So I had a swing here. Here's a hit. Hit two. Hit three. Hit four. Hit five. Hit six. And chances are they probably died on the first hit. But for whatever reason, the game says, Oh, you want to swing again? So I'm basically beating the dead horse. Literally here. But again... Pretty fucking powerful. And again, not that much of an investment. Remember, we talked about this in the last build. Power attack and all the other shit that you needed for the shattered defenses. And of course, the Cornigan Smash, which is my favorite. Dreadful Carnage being probably a little more OP than you need it to be. Is good. The difference being, this one only requires you to have a good weapon. And you don't even need a reach weapon, technically. Because you can cleave with a fucking dagger. But you need to have the power attack. You need to have cleave. You need to have... Uh, great cleave, you need to have cleave and finish, you need to have improved cleave and finish, and they all need to be within range of your weapon. That's the downside. Daggers, even long swords, have a reach range of two feet. See how it says six feet here? If I were to equip a uh, long sword, it goes back to just a melee range. Again, it would still be bigger because of my big ass fucking body. So, this is how I can do stuff like. Where the hell are you at, bad guys? Yet another obstacle. Show you the reach of a long sword while you're in legendary proportion size, just to show you how much farther it is. Get away. Oops. No, get away. Land blocker. Damn it, Land, you had one job, Land. Alright, anyway. Oh, uh, see where we at. Tech, tech, tech. Okay, so this will actually work out well because it'll give me a chance to, to great cleave with a fucking sword. Notice that I'm wielding it two handed, by the way, even though it's not a two handed weapon. So there is that. I'm just going to back up a little bit more. Maybe is going to try to ruin everything for me. She's like that. Flaming like bitch. Don't kill it. Oh, you suck. It's okay. I got like four of the bad guys over here. I got one dog. I want you to come over here and get her goddamn way. Thanks, right, one dog. You're the best. Okay, so, again, not using the long spear, not using a reach weapon. Remember, long spear is just one of many. We're using a generic long sword. It may be like a cold light one, but the point is it's just a long sword. Again, look, if, if I hover over my devastating blow, you'll see the circle. See the reach on that fucker? I'm getting everyone in the circle right now. So if I did cleave on somebody, or hell, even if I killed something, which I'm definitely going to do, it would do improved cleaving finish on everything in a fucking circle. Until I whiffed, or I ran out of bad guys to hit. And kill, of course. But, I can do better than that. What is better? I step away, find the farthest reaching guy, see how I can still move to him. It's the tiniest little green pip under my feet. So I'll have to take the tiniest little step. Still within range, though. Why? Because cleave only requires that I move. So I can move, swing, and I should hit this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. And if I kill any, again, the improved cleaving finish will kick off. Here we go. That's how you kill four dudes. See what I'm saying? Great cleave. Cleaving finish and improved cleaving finishes are amazing. And great cleave and improved cleaving finish being the best of those, of course. Uh, I just can't say enough good things about this type of build. You can uh, modify it, I suppose, slightly depending on the type of weapon that you're using. Because um, a long spear is a definitely different type of weapon than a long sword or a bardiche or a glaive. But uh, talking the difference between like a piercing weapon versus a, a, a slashing weapon. Having said that, I don't think there is a bludgeoning weapon that is a reach weapon by default. Again, give me a fucking mace. I would still have a better reach than normal because I'm the legendary proportion size. Same with a large person. Give me a fucking uh, um, earthbreaker. That's a two foot range, but it's a two handed weapon. Give me an Earthbreaker, give me a large person on my character, it will reach farther now because I have a large person. So this would be, a, the reason I bring this up, this would be a, a character that you'd either A, want to have access to a large person, what we're talking, potions, wands, scrolls, which again is what I gave my character, potions being the easiest. 
where you just chug it and run in with your large person body, a bonus to your strength besides, and a better reach with your weapon, and you can cleave and improve cleaving finish all fucking day long. Becomes extremely powerful very early on, less so at the end of the game, but remember, the beauty of it is improved cleaving finish and cleaving finish, the lesser version, are autopilot. If you kill something, it attempts to do it, as long as there's something within reach. And that's why those two are really, really nice. Because again, I could have you stop at cleave and great cleave. Those two alone, level one, is fucking powerful. But why not grab the other two that allows you to just mow shit down when I kill stuff? Like, that thing's dead, I've decided to swing at you now. Pop! In the face. And again, oh, you died too. I'm not going to swing at your next friend. Pop! Oh, he's dead too. You know, so you see the appeal here. The way for me to change it would be... What would be the best way to change it? A high crit weapon. So, so what we call crit fishing. You would have a, a better crit range than this terrible 19 and 20. Because A, this is garbage. Uh, of course, if I had an improved critical weapon or a, a, a keen longsword, this would be double the range. So I'd be a 17, 18, 19, 20. That's respectable. The goal would be to get something that would be a... Uh, let me see if I can find you one. A 17, 18, or a 18, 19, and 20, and then make it an improved critical weapon. Something that you could easily do. So let's go to weapons. Is it the faux shard? Let's just grab a cold iron one, and uh, it's a falchion. I can't remember which one I'm looking for. Cold iron falchion. I think those two are the kind of that I'm, I'm probably looking for. Okay, so here's oh, here's one that you can't even equip. So the full shard. Yeah, look at that. 18 to 20, and it's a reach weapon. There you go. Now that's an exotic weapon. If you wanted to burn a feat to get an exotic weapon, get the full shard. Why? The crit range is fucking huge. 18, 19, 20. I mean, look at my terrible 19, 20 here. That's, that's another point higher. You may say, who gives a shit about that? Well, again, you're going to get the improved critical version of it. That lowers it from an 18, 19, and 20 to a 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. On any of those rolls, on a 1d20, which is every attack you're going to roll, that means that has a chance to crit at those numbers. Doesn't mean it will, but the good news is, for the type of fighter you are, because you're a fighter, look at Weapon Mastery, which is something that, again, a Sword Saint even gets at the highest level. Look at that fucker. A, all attacks that could have been critical hits are confirmed critical hits. What does that mean? Again, if I hit you with a 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 with that improved critical faux shard, or a keen faux shard for that matter, it's going to crit. And, we're not done yet, the multiplier goes up. So if it's times two, which it currently is, it becomes a times three weapon. So you see how it says uh, 18 to 20 times two? Because of your weapon mastery, if faux shard was what you specialized in, this would be it. It'd be uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 because of improved critical, and it'd be times three, not times two. That means this range is huge, it's still a reach weapon, and you're critting, you're doing three times the damage, not three times, they roll the damage three times. Point's still the same, it's going to fucking crit like a brick shit house. Now why would you then ever want the spear then, Brother Newton? Because that's what we had, right? Well, here's your spear. Notice how it crits 19 and 20 because of improved critical, because spears only crit on a nat 20, because they suck. Actually, wait a minute, what? 19 and 20. Hold on a second. Yeah, there it goes, because I was looking under the wrong character. So for any of other character, normal character, it crits only on a natural 20, and it does three times the crit damage. Because I'm a skilled in this weapon and I have improved critical, you see how the range is doubled from 20 to 19 and 20, which is still lame sauce. And then instead of it being a times three for the crit damage, it's times four because of my weapon mastery in long spears. So again... Was it the ideal weapon? No, honestly, if I rebuilt this, I would specifically tell you to get the exotic weapon for Shard. And again, you don't have to grab that at level 1. You can get that later if you so choose. But before you get weapon focus, obviously. And again, I have weapon focus on this build. I have greater weapon focus on this build. I have weapon specialization and greater weapon specialization. Because why wouldn't you want an extra 4 points of fucking damage per hit? The goal is to do as much damage as possible and to kill some shit. And you may say, well, that's being maxing. Yeah, you wanted to swing lazily with your fucking weapon? How the fuck does that make any logic? I want to swing a longsword. What's your strength? Ten. Huh? What? What's your dex? Sixteen. Why shouldn't you use a rapier? Get yourself weapon finesse. At least you'll have a better chance at hitting. 
Again, this is the strength-based build. Okay? So now again, the variety of ways to do this. Notice I, I do have one other choice here for a two-hander. Uh, this is not a reach weapon, though. It is because I'm enlarged with the, you know, the legendary proportions. Again, a large person would do the same thing, just not as good. So my reach would still be better. Having said that, look at that bastard. It crits on, again, on a natural 18, 19, and 20. And if I had the keen version of it, like a keen falchion, or, again, the feet improved critical falchion, which would I highly recommend for a fighter because they get so many fucking feats, that would double the range. And again, that's the 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And because I would be probably Weapon Master in the Falcione, this two-handed awesome-ass weapon, big fucking sword, it would have a times three multiplier on it instead of the times two. Crit fishing like a fucking boss, really decent reach because I'm using a large person, legendary proportion, righteous might, and the spells similar to that frightful aspect being another. And again, good crit range, auto crit potential, and again, the, the chance, you know, only at level 20, but again, the chance of critting a lot, and again, a three times multiplier, fuck yeah. This becomes a beast. And you only need like, what, three, four, five feet to, uh, to get it? Again, four for the cleaves and power attack. That's not bad. Remember, everybody, and I mean everybody that gets to level 20 in this game, doesn't matter if you're a wizard, sorcerer, fighter, whatever, getting at least 10, because there's one at each level, uh, even level, or odd level, sorry. 1, 3, 5, all the way up to 19. 2 at level 1, thanks to me being human. Another one at level 1, thanks to me being a fighter. And then all, another one at each even level for a fighter. So fighters get a fucking metric shit ton of feats. Because it's all they got. But they do it well. Just saying. And with that, this covered everything I wanted to say about this other strength-based build. And, and the uh, last thing I, I will say this. Because there's so little in the way of feats necessary for here, if you know you're going to be a strength-based build and a melee-laying son of a bitch, whether you're a fighter, an Eldritch Scion, a Blood Rager, I will do this for their build, you will find me doing things like grabbing everything I need for cleave, you know, the cleave build that you're seeing here, and everything I would need for at least Corning and Smash. Maybe even Dreadful Carnage if I can fit it in the build just because I want to be a dick. Why? Because that's two builds for the price of one. I get to, like, intimidate motherfuckers. I have high persuasion. I hit, like, a brick shit out with a weapon. Guys start dying. Guess what happens? I start killing more guys and intimidating more guys. Because remember, Dreadful Carnage, the more guys you kill, you do an intimidating burst. Well, I'm swinging at the next guy. Well, what if they're already flat-footed to me now because they're intimidated by me? Remember that last build, the other video I just posted? That would work. With, with cleave, because just because you're swinging because of cleave or, or cleaving finish or improved cleaving finish doesn't mean they're not scared of you. That doesn't mean shatter defenses doesn't kick in. So all those targets would have been flat-footed to those attacks, assuming they were shaken or feared or you know, frightened or panicked. So I can, in many cases, merge both of those builds into a solid strength charisma-based build and fucking just mow shit down. And while you may say, well, that's, again, a lot of feet investment, what else are you going to fucking spend them on? You know, it met all my requirements. Hit like a brick shit house. Really good weapon focus. I got my power attacks. I got a good weapon, a nice reach weapon at that. I'm strong. I'm charismatic. I got nice persuasion skills and intimidation skills. And everybody on my freaking party loves the fact that I'm basically mowing shit down in the front ranks. Teammates are helping me. It's a win across the board. And when, you know, like the corny and smash, the dreadful carnage, and the... the shattered defenses slash uh, dazzling display doesn't work because, again, immunity to fear which we've st stated in the last video. I can still cleave, baby. There's no immunity to cleave in this game. It's do I hit you? Yes, well then I'm swinging at your friend. As long as, long as he's within range. And I haven't swung at him yet with my cleave ability. So I get a free attack. And then I get another free attack, thanks to Great Cleave. To the next guy that's within range. And then the next guy, until I whiff. And God forbid, I kill any one of those bastards. Cleaving finish. Improve cleaving finish. Improve cleaving finish. And just, again, big fucking circle of just damage, 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 damage. So again, one build is strong, the other build is strong, or those fuckers together. Have some serious fun. With that, that's all I have for this video. The next two videos, again, I'm probably working on tonight as far as the builds, but I won't post the videos, I'm sure, until tomorrow. Those will be the two dex-based builds for sure. I'll get those out to you guys tomorrow. They're easy to do. I've done them a million times. Again, one's going to be point-blank master for race spells. And the other, I suppose I can do it for bows. Maybe I will do it for bows. I'll do it for race spells just because I said I would. But I'll explain why you want to do it for bows in, in another subsection of that video. Um, the other build, the other dex-based build, will be two-weapon fighting. 
where you use like like a dagger and a dagger, a kukri and a kukri. And I notice I keep saying the same weapon twice. Because why wouldn't you? And yeah, you could have a dagger and a kukri. But now if I have weapon focused dagger, only one of those two weapons is getting the bonus. If I have weapon specialization dagger, again, only one of those two weapons is getting that plus two to damage. That's why I say dagger, dagger, kukri, kukri. Anything that you can, as a light weapon wield in one in each hand, is something you should probably double up on. Kukri's being the best so far. But again, that'll be the other video for tomorrow. With that, though, my name is Brother Mean. Please like, subscribe, comment down below. Did I forget to mention something? Yeah, feel free to comment below, guys. I'm not trying to, you know, confuse anybody here. Hopefully it's clear what this build's capable of doing. But with that, I'll see you guys soon. Bye now.